somehow the FBI didn't make it to the boat on time. Hans got away with Louis. Well, I'm just glad Courtney's all right. You know, I was thinking, Hans still has this vendetta against you. Maybe we should take Bonnie and just uh, go away for a should have made sure he was a gunner. In Duncan, Montega. promise me you won't go after him. It's... I recognize this handwriting. It's Shannon, isn't it? Uh, yes, the card should read, thank you for the lovely party and all of your support. Love, Connor, and Evan. Right. Thank you. Connor, I thought you said you didn't want to go to Alex and Edwina's party. I thought we agreed that Evan would represent Walsh Montgomery. Well, I realized that it was my mother's anniversary and I should be there. And I thought that hiding out in my apartment made me look guilty. Oh, well, I really wish you would have discussed this with me first. I think it might have been better if you had just kept a low profile. Our stocks are down again this morning, and if we lose that Cabot account, we're in big trouble. We won't lose Cabot. Everything went just fine at the party. Oh, I, uh, I didn't realize. Um, I think I left some of my files. Is there any word about Lily? Uh, nothing good, I'm afraid. We found the boat where that animal was keeping her, but uh, by the time we got there, uh, everybody was gone. He must have moved her somewhere else right after he attacked Courtney. What happened to Courtney? Andy, believe me, she's just sleeping. And when she wakes up, you're the one she's going to want to see, so I'll get out of here. If you need me, just have me paint. Did they find Lily? today by Pampers Faces for dry and happy babies. Well, it's got your name on it. <laughs> Medical records? Uh, Shannon's. The Immigration Service needs proof that she's not carrying any contagious diseases. and These give her a clean bill of health. Well, how does she get them, and why did she send them to you? Well, after, uh, with everything going on last night, I didn't have a chance to tell you that I, I went out to the castle, and I... Uh, Jessica, listen. Listen. Hi, Tom. <laughs> what can I do for you? Uh, I think you got that backwards. My secretary said you called, and you have something for me. I didn't. Shannon. What about Shannon? She still knows how to set up a mark. These are for you. Those are her medical records. Uh, they will show that she has a clean bill of health. Mm -hmm. so, so, where is Shannon? Then Tom rethought his question and said, never mind, I don't want to know. She'll come out of hiding as soon as they set a date for the hearing. Meanwhile, you've got the proof now. Why don't you uh, expedite things? Uh, get on the phone to the judge, perhaps? And call him right away. Good. So you saw Shannon at the castle? Yes, I went out there last night. I meant to tell you. Please try to understand. I had to talk to her. Oh, I understand. Actually, I'd like to have a word with her myself. Mm, Annie, you get somebody in here because I know where Lily is. We no. got to get it. It's okay. Please, we can... No, it's all no, right, but honey. Hans, No, but Hans told me that Lily's in the boat. Yeah, Annie's the police know. The lonely, the lonely they know. Lady. The police know about the boat, honey. You told them. 
I did. You did it. Yeah, you talked to Hal last night. Did they find a boat? Is Lily okay? Oh, I, don't, I don't know. They, they looked at the boat and it was empty. So. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> we must have moved Lily after, after he left. I last saw him. Oh, I just remember the ceiling falling on me. My leg hurt. It's all right. I keep, my leg, Andy. I can't feel my leg. Yeah, it's broken, honey. It's broken. They said it for you last night. Oh. And you have, uh, you have some bruises, and uh, it's all right. It's okay. You're gonna be out of here. <laughs> You're gonna be all right. It's nothing serious. Okay. I thought I was gonna lose you. Just cleared away the rubble, and you were there, and it was you, and I, I didn't. I thought. I didn't know if you were dead and I... Oh, but you... Sweetie, I'm sorry. No, why did you have to play detective? Why did you have to go after him and risk your I life had, like that? I had a hunch, Andy, about the marina, and look, I was right. Hans was there. You know what that guy's capable of, Courtney. Why didn't you just call the police? I tried to call the police, Andy, and the phone was broken, and, and he was going to get away, and he did get away, didn't he? It's okay. Only now, I made things worse. We got a report that Hans had been sighted near an old warehouse. Uh, when we got there, he was gone, and uh, a section of the building had collapsed on a young woman. And you thought it was Lily? The body was entirely covered by the rubble, except for her hand. She had Lily's locket clenched in her fist, and she was not moving. And when I saw that, a big black pit opened up in my gut. And I realized all over again how much I loved my granddaughter. Andy was there, taking photographs, and when he saw that it was Courtney, he just, he just went all to pieces. Well, what about Courtney? Is she okay? Um, yeah, her leg is busted up pretty good, but she's gonna pull through. Well, what about Lily? Do they have any idea where Hans might have taken her? The trail is stone cold. Well, you hang in there. They'll find her. Uh, well, I better be getting back. Uh, be at W-O-A-K yeah, yeah, if you need me. Well, we'll be pulling for Lily. Thank you. Man, poor Courtney. I, I need to go see her. I'll go with you. Oh, uh, wait a minute. Uh, do you... We, we have a meeting in ten minutes with Webster Software. Oh, thanks for reminding me. Evan, uh, you'll have to tell Courtney that I will uh, stop by to see her later. Give her my best. Sure. Now, where did I put that marketing report? You gave it to Jane to make photocopies. Right. I'll go see if she has them. Well, uh, I'm out of here if you've got everything under control. Barely, barely. Evan, we need to talk. How about meeting me for lunch at Emilio's this afternoon? Sure, I'll go see if Connor's free. No, just let's keep this one between me and you, all right? And you couldn't get Andy to leave the hospital. Oh, Lord, no. There's no way that he's going to leave Courtney. Not that I blame him. But he's been up all night long, and, of course, he's exhausted. Well, you must be exhausted, too. Um, I know we were supposed to go over some proposals for patterns this morning, but it can wait till later if you want. Oh, honey, thanks. I appreciate that, but I'm so far behind with everything right now. I'm just going to get started and get some things done. Okay. Uh, is it fresh coffee? Yep. Okay. Well, let's let's start with that. Okay. Should we work over here? Sure. What would you think if we did a show on teenage runaways? It seems more and more kids run away every year. It's practically an epidemic. Well, you know something. That's kind of a good idea. 
I've had some of that happen here in town. And, uh, thank you. I have a feeling the audience would be interested in that. Great. Uh, I I've been researching this. And these kids, they have to hustle just to eat. It's gone from panhandling to prostitution. We could take our cameras out and get some really gritty footage of a day in the life of a street kid. Well, yeah, the problem with gritty footage, I mean, it catches your eye, but it doesn't really do anything. It doesn't enlighten anybody. You know, I think what we ought to be doing is uh, educating people and, and trying to give these kids a sense of hope. Yeah. Yeah, the hard news approach might be a little intense for well, patterns. It's not that. That's not the point. I just think that we have to show these kids that there's a way to get some help, like uh, the Earl Mitchell Center, and isn't there a runaway hotline? Mm -hmm. Family counseling? You know, what we might do is maybe interview a family that's been reunited and find out how that happened. How yeah. did they go about doing that? That's a good idea. We, okay, we can work good. on that. I think we should. Oh. Uh, you want me to get that for Would you, you mind? Thank you. Kim Hughes' office. Just a moment. I'll check. It's Jim Enright confirming your lunch date. Jim Enright. Oh, he's the new rep at the advertising agency. With everything that's going on today, there's no way I can deal with that. Oh, Kim, if you're pressed for time today, I could take the lunch for you. Unless you have some really important business to discuss with him. No, no, it's just a courtesy lunch. Hello, Jim. It's Kim Hughes. I'm fine, thank you. I'm awfully sorry. I'm going to have to beg off lunch today. There's no way that I can get away from the office. However, my assistant, Janice Maxwell, is available. And she could certainly answer any question that you might have about the station. I'm just so sorry all this has happened. I know you've been so worried about Lily and now this. Yeah, I'm just, I'm relieved that, that Courtney's all right. Should we go see her after we finish up yes, here? Yes, I'd yeah, like to. Let me help you finish up here. Thank you. Thank you. You know, I'm just sorry that I was out in Gross Point sipping champagne when all this was happening. I wish I could have been here with you. Well, Ned was here. How was the party? Did you enjoy it? Uh, enjoy isn't quite the word I would use to describe it, but I'm glad that I went. Connor really needed the support. Connor was there? Yeah, yeah, she showed up. It was amazing, too. You know, here she was, falsely accused of murder. She's surrounded by all these people at this party, including her own mother, who thinks she might actually have done it. Oop, that's still wet. Yeah, but, you know, she, she had enough guts to just stand there and face them all head on. Oh, that must have been so difficult for her. Yeah, I think it was. You know, Connor's really trying to be strong, but underneath it all, I think she's really sad. It's like something inside of her has been broken and it's never going to be fixed. Well, it makes me so mad. And I think that the person who murdered Link is now destroying Connor's life. I don't know how a person like that can live with themselves. Are you all right? Oh, okay. Let me, let me go, go get a Don't worry about it. It's nothing. Sure thing. I'll let you know. So what did the judge say? Well, he said since we have these documents, we can probably clear this thing up in one hearing. Well, that's great. Oh, I didn't mention the catch, did I? Shannon has to come in person to request that hearing, and then they're going to take her into custody. What? Bloody hell, this poor woman's tried to work her way back to this country for the last three years, and now you're telling me some petty bureaucrat wants to put her behind bars? How long do they intend to lock her up? Uh, probably no more than a week. It depends on the court calendar. Well, Shannon will never agree to that, nor should she. What kind of justice is that for an American citizen? <sighs> Duncan, I will do what I can. Now I'm going to tell you something. The longer Shannon stays in hiding, the worse it is for her case, and you might want to tell her that. Bye. Bye. Some pusillanimous little toad pushing a pencil Tom behind his desk. Tom is just trying to help. That's Dr. fine, but immigration service is now just making a lousy situation even worse. How can we possibly resolve anything with that threat hanging Well, out? I don't know. You tell me. Okay, you said you saw Shannon. How is she? Well, physically, she's all right. But she and Lisa had a scare. I found them in the... 
One of the back rooms in the north wing of the castle. What? Aye. They were locked in one of the rooms. Lisa said that Shannon took it pretty bad. She was scared by being so closed in. And that's why I don't think she'll let anybody put her behind bars. Well, you should know her better than anybody, I guess. I gotta get back to work. <clears throat> Thanks. Jessica, I really did mean to tell you about the castle and seeing Shannon. I don't want there to be any secrets between well, us. Well, sweetheart, it's not secrets that are between us. It's Shannon. And now I know this is difficult for you, but I feel like my life, no, our lives are spinning out of control and there's nothing I can do about it. Listen, I don't we forget about all of this. Go have a nice romantic lunch at Emilio's. Just a two. That would be nice. No? It's a date. I'll see you later. Well, that meeting was an ordeal. Was it my imagination or was Austin Webster a little edgy? That was not your imagination. Well, thank goodness you came in with a marketing report when you did. He seemed to perk right up when he saw the increase in sales. Well, that's a little tactic I learned from you. Well, thank you. I guess I should be going. Oh, Connor, don't you think we should discuss the meeting? Why Webster was so upset? Connor, we've got a lot of clients just looking for an excuse to jump ship. And if one goes, they all follow, and this company goes down the drain. I think you're overreacting a little. I don't think I am. We have to face it. We need to take a look at this. Jane had this. She didn't want you to see it. You're an evil murderer, and you won't get away with it. I hope you fry. Wow. I'm sorry. It's all right. I don't think you should worry about it. Anyone who writes garbage like this isn't really client material anyway. That letter is not the problem. It's the letters our clients might be getting, and it's only going to get worse when your case goes to trial and your front page news every single this day. This isn't going to go to trial. Hal is going to find Link's killer, and, and this whole nightmare is going to be well, over. I hope you're right, but I've got this feeling. I really don't want to talk about this anymore. I'm going to go see the court. Connor, all I want is what's best for this company. So do I, Emily. I wonder. Courtney. Courtney, stop blaming yourself, okay? Lily's gonna be all right. It's not all right, Andy. Hans could have taken Lily out of Oakdale by now, and it was all my fault. All because I had to go and play detective. I didn't mean that. Hey, I don't hey, mean... Hey, come on, you're tired. You've been up all night. Why don't you go home, have a shower, have some breakfast? Shower sounds good. Is that okay? Mm -hmm. Come on. I love you very much, and uh, I'll see you soon. Okay. Is there anything I can do for you? Do you think they'll let me take a shower? I doubt it with that cast here, but I'll find out. I tried to call the police. Courtney, darling, you have come through a terrible experience in fine shape. Now, don't you worry about anything and just concentrate on getting well. <laughs> hey, Tiger. Hey. You up for a visitor? Yeah. Cal told us everything about it. That was a very brave thing you did. Oh, more like stupid. But don't say that. You risked your life for a friend. Uh, I don't know if I could do that. Andy thinks I shouldn't have done it. Lily could be in more danger now because of me. You shouldn't think like that. And he shouldn't either. He's your husband. He should be praising you, not putting you down. Oh, I can't blame him. He's upset. He saw me in the warehouse, and he thought I was dead. What was Andy doing in the warehouse? 
He thought it was Lily that was trapped under the rubble. He was there taking pictures for the City Times. We'll continue with part two of As the World Turns in just a moment. Reach for a star. Find out how Gallant Jackie told her kid she has cancer. Reach for a star and read the untold story of Tanya Harding's secret Olympic agony. The gutsy ice queen puts off vital surgery so she can skate. You thought Michael Jackson bought that boy's silence? Guess again. The DA says he's ready to testify. Plus, celebrate 20 fabulous years of star and recapture dozens of outrageous moments. Cher's bagel boy going berserk. Pregnant die burying her tummy. Fergie's lover kissing her toes. Reach for a birthday star. And now, part two of As the World Turns. Oh, there you are. Uh, if this is a bad time, I... No. No. It's a good time. I didn't expect to see you today. I do. You had any news about Lily? No, not a thing. And the waiting is just about to kill me. Mm. I thought if I came to work, I could get my mind off of it, but I haven't been able to think of anything except my granddaughter in the hands of that madman. And the cops and the FBI, they don't have any idea what that idiot plans to do. I'll tell you, I'm just about ready to go over the edge, and I suppose that's why I've just done something that was uh, to be charitable, genuinely stupid. Whoa. Well, considering everything that's going on right now, I imagine you're probably entitled to maybe even... Two stupid things. <laughs> you think so? I think so. Sit down. I'm going to get you some coffee. Thank you. <sighs> okay. I want to hear all about it. What happened? Well, I trumped up some cockamamie excuse, and I... I went to see Connor. And when I got there, I just... Blurted out all my troubles right in front of Emily and him. And you know, even with everything that that woman has on her mind, she still found a place in her heart to be very deeply concerned about Courtney and Lily. I have an idea. She has a pretty big place in her heart for you, too. Listen, doesn't that tell you something? What? Well, when you wanted somebody to turn to, you went to Connor. Well, I had no right to just waltz in there and dump all my troubles in her lap oh. all the worries that she's got. Don't be ridiculous. What if she wants you to? And, and, and furthermore, what if at this crisis point in her life, she wants to turn to you? No, no, I'm afraid that's not the case. Why not? Uh, well... She doesn't want to have anything to do with me. She made that abundantly clear when she uh, got rid of the baby. Baby? Yeah. Connor was pregnant with my child, and she decided to end the pregnancy. I only do this person as a very special patient. Blood pressure's a little high. I'm gonna order a sedative so you can get some rest. I think I'll be okay. I'd just like to speak to my husband alone, if that's all right. Sure. I'll be right outside. Okay, thanks. Okay, good. Evan told me that you were taking pictures at the warehouse. I did. What the hell was Evan talking to you about? Why didn't you tell me? Because you know how much I hate it when you exploit people's pain for your newspaper. Oh, Courtney, look, we've been through this before. I, that's what I do. I take pictures. I didn't know that that was you. No, you I... thought it was Lily. It was Lily. You thought it was a dead body just lying there, and you were busy taking photographs. You don't understand. No, I'm not... I don't understand. I don't understand you at all. <laughs> You accused me of playing detective. But at least I was trying to help Lily. Not make a profit off her dead body. Is that what you think of me, really? I don't know. 
what to think of you. I'm so sorry about this. We came to see Courtney. Can she take visitors? Uh, yes, but Andy's with her now. Oh. Well, we'll just let them be private. How's she doing? Well, she has a broken leg and she's bruised all over, but she's a very, very lucky young lady. Hey. I tried to get here earlier, but I couldn't get away. Have you have you seen Courtney yet? No, not yet, but it's great that you came. I know how busy you are. Well, after my trial, I may have nothing but free time on my hands. 25 to life. She still seems in shock by all that's happened. Yeah, I think so. We're not going to let this happen to her again. Listen now, you take care of yourself, you hear? Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Uh, I think I'm going to stick around here for a little bit. I'll meet you back out okay. the farm. See you in a bit. Okay. Hey. Something's wrong, Andy, I can tell. What's going on between you and Courtney? Would it help to talk about it? What do you mean? It's easy for Grandma to see that something's keeping you and Andy apart when you should be holding on to each other. Graham, when I was at the warehouse and I was trying to get away from haunts, I kept thinking, if I get myself killed, how is Andy going to live with that? And then I find out that at the warehouse, Andy thought somebody had been killed and he was busy trying to photograph the body. What does she think, that I'm some kind of unfeeling monster? She doesn't even try to see my side. Well, maybe she can't. Look, you know, I know how you feel because well, I'm the same way. When something major happens in my life, something that, you know, I have really strong feelings about, I mean, the first thing I go for is my pencil and I work it out on my sketchbook. Exactly. I go for my camera and I capture that emotion. Right. Right, but Andy, you know, you know, Courtney's not an artist, so maybe it's harder for her to understand that. You know that, that when you reach for your camera and you take a picture, it's not necessarily because you're unfeeling. It's just I express what you feel. Courtney, you and Andy were very young when you got married, which means you're still both growing and still changing, but not necessarily in the same direction. Are you saying Andy and I are too different? No, what I'm saying is that any two people have to work constantly to understand each other. Now, you've both been through a terrifying experience, and now perhaps your fear is coming out as anger, and maybe it's being misdirected. You're not really angry with Andy now, are you? Hi. Can I come in? Oh, Dad. It's dawn. I just, um... The other night, I just found out that, um... She's hung up on you. You knew? Well, I guessed it. I mean, she always kind of lit up whenever you were around the place. Well, how come I didn't pick up on this? I mean, she says I was leading her on. You think I was sending her some kind of signal? Sometimes people see what they want to see. Look, I tried to tell her, you know, how much in love I am with my wife and that I like her as a friend, but I guess I, I blew it because she says, no, all I feel for her is pity, and... Well, Pop, that's not true either. I mean, I like her, I do. Uh-huh. Well, maybe I did treat her differently because of the HIV thing. I mean, I thought I was doing the, the right thing, but... But maybe I, I really wasn't. I mean, you know better than anybody that... She has to maintain a positive attitude to stay healthy, so all the time she was spending building up her self-esteem, I was destroying it. Hey, come on now. Don't blame yourself for trying to help another human being. I think I went about it the wrong way. I did it for the wrong reasons. I, you know, I felt guilty because I was relieved that what happened to Dawn didn't happen to Margo, and so I guess I overcompensated in some way and tried to give Dawn some of the nice things in life like, like we have. Have you told Margo about this? Oh, God, no. I... You know, we talk about absolutely everything, but... 
This is not something to talk about over the phone. I'm afraid if I bring it up, it's gonna destroy Dawn's trust in me even more. And you no, know, Margot doesn't show up. But let me tell you something. She's still really freaked by the HIV scare and the whole rape, and I don't want to bring that whole subject up again. I mean, what? What would you do, Pop? What would I do? Yeah. That's really a tough one, but uh, I think once you set your mind to it, you'll come up with something much better than I would. That'll be right for everybody concerned. I guess I just have faith in you, son. So you're new to the agency. They need a shot of new blood. So how do you like working at WOAK? I love it. I love it. I'm learning so much from Kim Hughes. Do you know her show, Patterns? Mm -hmm. This morning, I suggested that we do a piece on teenage runaways turning to prostitution. And she knew just what to do to turn it around and make it more uplifting. She has such a strong sense of integrity about the show. I mean, she won't change it just to get a bigger, younger audience. The younger audience is where the dollars are. That's the demographic the agency is after. Well, maybe we'll have to create a whole new show just for you. So why didn't you want Connor here? Evan, I know Connor's been under a lot of stress, and I certainly don't want to add to it. But you saw her this morning. I mean, she practically forgot that meeting, and when she got there, she didn't handle it very well. And then there's hate mail. What? Let's just say your sister isn't winning any popularity votes these days. We need a contingency plan. Uh, plan? Could you be a little more specific here? We need to restructure the balance of power just temporarily until Connor's out of hot water. Do you think you can handle a little more responsibility? And just what did you have in mind? Hi, hey, Tom. Um, Hi. Um, listen. That's Shannon. I wanted to run something by you, but you know what? It can wait. No, no, go ahead. It's about Shannon. Go ahead. It's all right, Tom. Jessica and I are in this together. Okay, um, here's the deal. Technically, you are still married to Shannon, so maybe I can get the judge to release her into your custody until the hearing, but, you know, it's just a thought, you know. Thought. Well, thanks, Tom. And we'll think about it. Sure. to come here to forget about all of that. Well, it doesn't look like that's going to happen, does it? So, what do you think about Tom's idea? Well, if he, uh, by custody, he means that I am responsible for making sure she gets to the hearing, maybe it'll work. Well, what if it means Shannon coming to live with us? <laughs> look, why don't we just try to enjoy ourselves? Uh, uh, and uh, forget about all that. Actually, I can't stay for lunch. Something's come up. I gotta go. Jess, no, look, you're upset. No, I'm I, not upset. I... I'm not upset. I just gotta take care of something. I'll see you later. I am so sorry. Well, I don't want you to. I don't want you to get the wrong idea. I'm not blaming her. It was my fault. I drove her to it. I just refused to believe that the child was mine. Oh, my God. You thought it was Lynx, baby. Yeah, well, I thought it had to be Lynx, and I was so damn bullheaded. Even when I heard the truth, I didn't believe it. So I, I basically just abandoned Connor when she needed me the very most. You know... The hardest part of this is that Connor and I could have made a wonderful family for that child. And now it's all just gone. It's... It's so sad. Yeah, it's sad. I had the two things that I wanted most in the world, and I just threw them away, and I'm not ever going to get them back. Just a minute. I, I, 
You can't go back, of course. Everybody knows that, but... You can go forward. I mean, that's the point, isn't it? You go forward, and you can do it together. Go to a whole new place, the two of you. <laughs> yeah. Don't I wish? No, don't wish. Do it. Do it. You know, I can't believe that I just walked in here and dumped all my troubles in your lap. I, you know, I don't usually do that kind of thing. Well, are we best pals or not? We damn sure are. But well, what better place? I'm awful glad you did. Yeah, I'm glad too. I feel the damn sight better. <laughs> That's the way. Connor, you got a minute? Sure. I want to apologize if I came on too strong earlier. All I want to do is help you. Let's just be honest with each other, Em. All you really care about lately is the company. Of course I care about this company. You know, everything I have is wrapped up in this place. But it's not just me. It's the people who work for us. It's our stockholders. I am well aware of how many people depend on us here. I know you are. And I also know that if you were advising a client in our situation, you would tell them two things. You would tell them to think realistically and to plan ahead. Just exactly what are you trying to say? We need to think about our future and how to handle it if you, if you have to step down as CEO. You want me to resign? No, I'm just saying we need to talk about it so we can prepare ourselves in case it happens to be necessary. Connor, it wouldn't be permanent. Only, only until all of this bad press blows over. The corporate structure wouldn't have to change. The CEO chair will be here waiting for you. I'm just concerned about preserving Walsh Montgomery's image. What about my image? Don't you think it's going to make me look a little guilty if I step down? Maybe. Or maybe it'll look like you're protecting this company. Think about it, will you? All right. I'll think about it. That's all I ask. I'm in your corner, Connor. Jane said I could Hi. just come on in. I have the contracts that we talked about. Oh, you didn't have to do that. I could have sent a messenger over. Oh, not a problem. I needed an excuse to get away. Well, happy to provide one. I needed to talk to you anyway. What's up? How soon do you think my trial will be? Well, uh, with the grand jury indictment, the DA's office has no choice but to proceed as soon as possible. Emily wants me to resign as CEO. <laughs> no, I don't think that's necessary. Well, actually, Jess, from a purely business standpoint, I'm afraid she may be right. It just really hurt to hear her say it. And Cal came in this morning, and it just hit me how I lost him and the baby and now the company. Everything. Everything just seems to be out of my control lately. Believe me, I know what you mean. What am I gonna do? Are you all right, my love? You seem very quiet since we got back from the hospital. Just a headache. I'm fine. Well, I think I'm gonna give Caleb a ring and mm. see if there's any news about Lily. Take your time. You go. Oh, it's good news. I won't be long. If I go on trial for murder, I'll have nothing but time on my hands. 25 to life.
Dear Debbie, sometimes in life we have to do things that are very difficult, things we don't want to do. And we realize we have to do them because otherwise we won't be able to live with ourselves. For me, this is one of those times. Oh, Bianca, I'm gonna be just fine. There's a guard outside the door. All right, all right, thank you. Okay, bye-bye. Me too. Well, Rosanna says that uh, I shouldn't really expect you to understand. You talked to Rosanna? Yeah. She's an artist, you know. She knows. She knows what it's like. I, I express my Rosanna feelings. I have knows. feelings. Rosanna knows. Andy, I'm your wife. I'm supposed to know you better than anybody. You do. You know me no, better than anybody I don't. I in don't. the world. You do. I, I don't. <laughs> Andy, I had a talk with Graham earlier. And she was telling me things that I've been thinking a lot about lately. Things that I have feared were true. She, t she told me that we got married too young and that we're growing in opposite directions and the fact that somebody else has noticed this has made me feel that it's not just my imagination it's not just me overreacting maybe you and I don't really know each other anymore going on just when they were so close to finding Lily Hans turns the tables now what in the world has he done with her find out tomorrow as the world turns and his family believed he was innocent but the truth is out about Billy what's Vanessa going to do now next on Guiding Light scarves by Echo Design Group furs by Christie Brothers join us tomorrow for as the world turns